This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 508, How to Lose Muscle While Dieting, by J.C. Dean of jcdfitness.com, and I'm your host and narrator, Dr. Neil. Happy Wednesday to you. Welcome back to Optimal Health Daily, where I read some of the best health and fitness blogs to you, usually with a little bit of commentary at the end. Now, really quickly, before I get started, don't forget that if you're part of our weekly newsletter at oldpodcast.com, you'll be in raffles to win books from us on the first of the month which is just four days away. So now's a great time to join. It's free, you'll get some life tips, quotes, and more from us. And it's a great way to show your support. Again, that's all at oldpodcast.com. I'll give you another quick reminder at the end. But for now, like I promised, let's get right to it and start optimizing your life. How to Lose Muscle While Dieting by J.C. Dean of jcdfitness.com. Learning how to lose muscle while dieting is probably easier than you think. No, really. All you have to do is train too much and eat too little. Here's what I mean. I remember the first time I dieted down. It was my freshman year in college, and there was a bet between me and 15 other guys to see who could get the leanest. First, second, and third place winners would walk away with some cash. I was sold. Show me the money the best way to lose muscle. Most all of us were up for the challenge. We all began training four to five days per week with lots of cardio. Now at this time, I was 19 and could withstand much more mental and physical stress because I was in college, had no job or obligations outside of my studies. Food was taken care of at the mess hall and I only needed to worry about what I'd be doing on the weekends for fun. I lost about 30 pounds during a 16-week period, but along with a lot of fat, I also lost a good amount of muscle. I know this for two reasons. One, I lost a good amount of strength on my major lifts, a more than 10% reduction in total loads. And two, I lost a good amount of size in my upper body and noticed it considerably in how my clothes fit. My training was comprised of four to five days of weight training and six days of cardio. Here's a sample schedule. Before class, 45 minutes to an hour of fasted cardio on the treadmill or the elliptical. Breakfast lots of egg whites, with maybe one to two yolks, and oatmeal. Then, more cardio, lots of walking between classes in the cafeteria. I was eating about five to six times per day. Then, after class, hit the gym and do a high rep body part split, which I learned is not optimal. Dinner, no carbs after 7 p.m. because I thought it'd make me fat. And then bedtime was never at a decent hour. I'd then wake up and do it all over again. While my diet was probably high enough in protein to prevent major muscle loss, my deficit was pretty big due to the activity, and I didn't rest as much as I could. When this happens, stress hormones are high. Things like cortisol and adrenaline will spike, and the healthy hormones like thyroid, think T3 and T4, and testosterone will plummet. I found myself irritable, tired, and frustrated a lot, but I had a goal. I wanted to get lean for the first time in my life and win this contest. First of all, I was doing way too much training volume for the amount of food I was eating. My training sessions were longer than an hour each day, and exhaustion was high. I'd often fall asleep in class and sometimes miss them altogether due to just staying in my dorm. My overall training loads were over 15 hours per week if you count the cardio and weight training sessions. Learning how to lose muscle netted me 300 bucks. In about 16 weeks, I lost 30 pounds of both fat and muscle, got second place in the best body competition and was pumped about my results. However, it wasn't the best way to go about losing body fat at all. It cost me strength gains, muscle gains, and it built up a lot of neurosis about food and training. It took me a solid few years to snap out of all this behavior because I was afraid I'd lose my abs and get fat again. But I learned a lot in this process, mostly how not to go about losing fat, and I learned a lot about how to lose muscle on a diet. I also learned how to run for long distances, many times over five miles a session. I actually hated running, but thought it was the only way to lose body fat. About a year later, I eventually found a mentor who took over my training and diet-related activities and coached me to a bigger, thicker version of myself. How to lose muscle checklist. Number one, drop your protein intake to third world levels. Less than 30 grams per day should work wonders. Two, Increase your cardio training output to running for long distances every day. Three, sleep less than eight hours per night. Four, 
fast for long periods of time. Alternate day fasts would work wonders here. Five, weight train with a ton of volume, much like what you'll find in the bodybuilding magazines. And six, always push your training to failure and exhaust your nervous system. Warning, you don't really want to lose muscle. Here's why. One, muscle tissue is metabolically active, meaning it burns more calories at rest. Two, muscle tissue is protective of your joints, internal organs, and other tissues. Three, muscle helps you maintain better posture. And four, muscle gives your body shape, and to many people, is more aesthetically appealing. If you purposefully lose muscle through hard dieting and training, you can cause your body more stress than necessary and even hurt your thyroid, which is the master hormone that affects metabolism. Instead of trying to purposefully lose muscle, it's better to aim to lose body fat through proper diet and training methods. So that means no starvation diets, no overly excessive training schedules that zap your energy, and no unsafe supplements or fad diets that hurt your body. Here's what you could do instead. Aim for one gram of protein per pound of body weight, learn how to train properly for fat loss, and remember to make sure you eat well to fuel your training. You just listened to the post titled How to Lose Muscle While Dieting by JC Dean of jcdfitness.com. It can be a frustrating fine line to find out how many calories do I need to replenish what I'm losing and yet at the same time, not overdo it. Because JC is absolutely right. We have to eat to support that growth that we want. But finding that happy medium is a little bit of trial and error. Now, what I found, not through research, this is completely personal experience and anecdotal evidence, so take it for what you will. Folks often find success when they consume about 50% of their calories each day from carbohydrate, about 20 to 35% of the calories coming from protein, and then the rest from fat. And again, you could try that just so long as it doesn't cause you any harm. But I found that this ratio makes people feel full. They don't feel starved throughout the day. So it supplies them with what they need so long as they're eating a variety of foods. And so I wanna be sure that the carbs are well chosen, that they're of course whole grains, that we're not forgetting about the dietary fiber that's important, and that we're watching our vegetable and fruit intake as well. Most of us in the Western world don't have a problem with getting enough protein, so I'm willing to guess that that's not something that you really need to worry too much about. And then when it comes to fat, focus on the monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fats, in particular those omega-3 fats. And again, that's just anecdotal. That's not through any research. And so take my advice with a grain of salt, and of course, check with your healthcare provider to see if this would be right for you. Because in the end, JC's absolutely right. The last thing we want to do when we're trying to get lean is to lose that leanness or lose that muscle. All right, like I mentioned at the top of the show, and like I promised, I would remind you, we're doing another book giveaway to someone random on our weekly newsletter this Sunday. So if you want to be a part of that for free and get some free tools to help you optimize your life, come by oldpodcast.com. And remember, if you want to be in the next raffle, make sure you join before Sunday. All right, that does it for today. I hope you have a great rest of your Wednesday, and I'll be back here for tomorrow's show where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this show and Optimal Living Daily, the brother podcast of this one. Literally, I'm Dr. Neil's brother. If you like the format of this show, you'll love Optimal Living Daily too, where I also read to you from blogs, but cover other topics like personal development, finance, and minimalism from bloggers like Derek Sivers, The Minimalists, Zen Habits, and many more. So for more amazing content read to you for free, come subscribe to Optimal Living Daily too, and together we'll optimize your life. You've been listening to Optimal Health Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift, as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us, and remember, your optimal life awaits.